impression we've been here together no impression uh, from what Hello, this is David Heine, and we're in the reopened Bachok, painting to come back from America, a very successful trip, and down the street at the Dalek Museum, another successful trip. They're all reassembled here in the old Rietveld part of the museum. Now it's expanded and will hold the permanent collection for more or less uh, permanent arrangement. Out in the back we'll uh, visit is the Kirokawa edition. of what he collected. going? Well, I think it's going well. Happily, uh, everything was ready on time. Uh, about six weeks ago, uh, looking around, we thought, gosh, uh, this will never be, uh, never be ready, but I didn't say it out loud. And uh, the collection's back in the old building. The first, uh, first exhibition is, uh, is open. 
everybody is uh, milling around and I think it's, uh, it's going well. Now, you've been talking to a lot of people today and uh, for many people this is their first impression. We've been here together, uh, but what's your general impression uh, from what they say to you? Mm -hmm. I think the reactions are enthusiastic. Uh, generally people uh, have had some idea of what to expect from the outside of the, the building, the new wing, but I think they're really generally quite astonished when they come in and they see yeah, what I describe as breathtaking uh, interiors. Uh, and it's a building that some ways holds its secrets until the last. As you, as you walk around and then you see the, the opening with the pond, you see the titanium facade, uh, you come down and you see the, 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 the light catching on glancing over the, the, the streaming water. And then when you come in and walk around the uh, corridor into a space like this, which uh, I think captures something of the, the open, in, open and inviting feel of uh, Rietveld's original building, I think people are really quite taken aback. And it's, uh, I hope, an impressive experience for them. In speaking with the architect earlier, he said that uh, one of his ideas was not to impose too much on the area and that only 30% of the area of the, the building itself is above ground. Uh, that that's above ground now is filled with art. How does that feel? Well, I think as you wander around, you don't get the impression that two-thirds of the building is under the ground at all. It's a very light building, it's a very airy building. Um, and, uh, and of course, it's uh, great to see it with uh, art in it, fulfilling its uh, proper function. What is going on over in the old building? You know, I haven't had a chance to walk over there yet, but. Mm. How has that uh, changed? Well, you'll see that we've completely renovated the old building. Everything's been taken out and uh, done again. Uh, about ten months ago, there were just four walls and a roof left standing. There's a new presentation of the permanent collection. It's been we've been able to give it much more room, and uh, we've hung the pictures in such a way as I, I think to give each picture more attention. Uh, I think I think the phrase wall power comes from America, but uh, Van Gogh's pictures uh, have certainly got wall power, and we try to give them the room to so they can come across and people have room to, to see them. There's a new presentation of uh, Van Gogh. There's also a new presentation of the uh, Van Gogh in the context of the, the 19th century, and that uh, we're very pleased with. We think it, it, it works very well. Well, John, I know you're real busy today, so thank you very much for talking with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. City, behind the kind of a hero of Amsterdam, Rietveld, adding a, what eventually became a kind of a controversial museum. Mm -hmm. Did you feel any of the, the, the pressure of, uh, of designing here in the museum? Of course, it's strong pressure every day. Uh, I think it's the architect always feeling the pressure. Even uh, I make a project in Bizan, nothing there. But still, the architecture belongs to the nature. So we must think about the influence to the surroundings. So in that sense, uh, always the architect feeling the pressure from the environment. From already live the surrounding area, and uh, uh, usually we have uh, the buildings, architecture designed by other architects. Maybe sometimes very important historical to the architect next to the project. So, in any case, we have a big pressure to create something new. So. Especially the museum plan, very typical in the, the place. Uh, the, the museum plan is 
it is always loved by Amsterdam citizens and also surrounded by the historical buildings, the National Museum, State Museum, Theater, Litwell. And Litwell, so for me, it, it, it's always a respect. You know, Litwell, he, he's a hero of the beginning of the I did an interview with John Layton not long ago uh -huh. in, in your building, and by the way, it's a very beautiful space. I really enjoyed mm. it. But one of the things he mentioned mm. was that the mm. titanium box mm. was sort of an aside to mm. uh, refill. Is that mm. uh, how you see it? Uh, you know, the heat belt and myself is uh, standing a different era. Uh, I think it's the, at that time, the lead belt is sinking the main building of Frankfurt Museum. They don't have any uh, the titanium. There is a new material, a high-tech material. It's easy to maintain. Uh, uh, never uh, last, lasting. So the, my architecture is always try to make a symbiosis between the uh, traditional material and high-tech material. That is the expression of the age we are living now. So that is the difference uh, between the D12 building. They are using their material of that age, and I'm using the combination of uh, natural material like stone with high-tech material. That is the expression of our age. Now, the one museum that comes to mind uh, mm -hmm. that is also around is Frank Lloyd Wright's mm -hmm. uh, Guggenheim mm -hmm. in New York. Mm -hmm. Is there any relationship? You, you put kind of a round building here in the mm -hmm. middle of a square peg. Is there yeah. a, some idea behind that? Uh, my first idea is the extension uh, based on the same idea of Litwell. Square building sticking to the uh, you know, museum plane. And I found the square shape is, is too strong, uh, especially it is inside in the central area of the museum plane. And the uh, square shape is much hazard the view to the Litwell building. So uh, I made a more soft shape, especially facing to the museum frame, to keep the maximum visibility from the central area of the museum frame to the Litwell building. And the uh, most important thing is uh, more than 70% of the building is underground to reduce the volume, to make uh, you know architectural profile is uh, quite low. Uh, it means I'm always trying to keep the original landscaping of the people to make a minimize of my architecture. Uh, that's why it's the only the, the main exhibition space is sticking out above the grave. Other facilities but here is the underground. Of course, uh, I put the uh, interesting solution to make a sun tanga. Then you can feel the underground is looking like uh, ground level, of nature, water, lighting. So uh, this is, uh, I think, it's, uh, the better solution. How we can connect to the maybe. Well, thank you very much for coming back to Berlin. Truly a beautiful addition to the museum. Thank you very much. <laughs>
with Andreas Blum, who is the uh, head of the cure, the curation, everything that happens over here in the new exhibit, That's I guess. Right, yeah. uh, could you tell me, how is it going here today? Uh, it's hectic. Uh, we're almost done. Um, it's actually quite an experience to finally work with the new exhibition wing. I mean, you know, you've seen the plans, you've seen a model, you've had a little, you know, practice with little, you know, tiny scale models. Yet when the paintings arrive, it's a different, different world. And, and we were a little bit scared, you could say, that, you know, this volume that we have all of a sudden. You know, we were used to cabinets. Whenever we were planning an exhibition, you know, oh, this painting, you know, room three, left more. Now we have this volume and large walls. And so we, we thought, hmm, that's going to be interesting. And how will it look? Because the building was finished about four or five months before the first painting came in. You had to dry and all that. So the paintings came, and then we have like a week and to arrange it. And you know, you plan for many years, and you get a week to hang the paintings. And that's frightening. But uh, I think it looks good. And the building uh, proves itself as not only a striking structure, but actually very practical. Uh, you don't expect that from modern architecture, too bad perhaps, but it is possible. Uh, when the paintings were hanging, uh, we finally could like walk back and look at them from a distance and, and, and see them like blend in to each other and, and, and see the impressionist paintings by Monet really from, from, from a distance. And we have a new lighting system, which is either daylit or like an imitation of daylight. So you have a, a light that we believe is uh, really adequate for the art, so we're very pleased. So all in all, um, your new wing is going to be primarily used for exhibitions, is that correct? Exclusively, exclusively. This is the exhibition wing. It's built for exhibitions, yet it is built actually for the old situation because our collection was expanding and always suffering from the exhibition. So we always had to take a floor down and have our exhibition there. Now finally we can do it here and leave the collection more or less alone, and uh, people are, can see more paintings. Van Gogh is distributed all over the floors in the old Rietveld building, and the tourists and the visitors, you know, they can distribute better evenly over the building. Um, so collection and exhibition both benefit from this expansion. How, uh, you've got a, an exhibit up now, and it's uh, very impressive. We've just gone through it. How would you describe that, and how did that come together? It's an exhibition on Theo van Gogh, Theo, Vincent's younger brother, who is known only actually as the one who sent the checks to, to Vincent to keep him going and painting and alive. Um, yet all our collection actually is, is Theo's, because Vincent's own paintings, the paintings that the brothers collected, that's actually our museum. And we always wanted to dedicate an exhibition on Theo. Theo as collector and Theo as an art dealer. And we thought, well, this is the moment, because the museum has a little brother. Now, now let's have the show on the little brother. And so what we're trying to do is to give an idea of what went through Theo's hands when he was a dealer in Paris. Between 1880 and 1890, he was a, the director of a branch of Goupil. Goupil was the, the dealer in, of art in Paris. And uh, Theo sold in these 10 years about a thousand paintings by 300 artists. Of course, they're not all here now. Um, we, some painting we'll never find, really. Uh, but yet what we're tr trying to do is to give a panorama of what was to be seen in Theo's gallery. And not just the modern stuff, not just the academics, are really a mix of both. For the first time, perhaps in the exhibition history, we have a, a room in which you can see a painter like Jean-Léon Giron. He was like the most expensive painter of the time. Orientalist, like you see the excursion of the harem on the Nile. Like there's all kinds of paintings. In the same room, you have Gauguin paintings that were unsaleable. But everything was to be seen at Theo's gallery at the same time. And to give an idea of what, what, what could happen, what, the whole panorama. That's the idea of the show. And I, I mean, we were a little bit worried that it could be a messy confusion. But I think it actually works quite well. Well, I noticed uh, that you kind of encompassed uh, Theo's career. I mean, he was in The Hague for a while, and you have some uh, representary paintings there. In the little titanium box that is the, the box is what is that? Well, the titanium box, actually, that's the only thing that's not titanium. The rest is 